Hi, this is the Coaching Educator with Rebecca M. Carroll with Tuesday Tips. Do you have trouble trying to figure out how to get your college list started and what to look for? Stay tuned and I'm going to go over how to do a college search and get a really good list together. All right, let's start out with how to do a really good college search and make your list. We are going to be looking at colleges. We know that there are a lot of choices. There's in-state, there's public colleges, there's private colleges, and there's out-of-state colleges. And people ask a very blanket question to me almost every presentation that I give, they ask, so what do you how what's your feeling on private colleges well my feeling is whatever college gives you the most amount of money and has the major that you're looking to study and gives you the opportunity to do some really creative things while you're at the college that's the college you should be looking at so let's narrow down what we should be doing so first you want to try to do if you're not quite sure what you want to do you want to try to do a career interest survey or assessment many people have assessments i in, in particular use a, a really nice assessment that goes over several different factors that looks more at you as a person some of your interests some of your skills your intellect and things that come naturally to you and it pulls together a really nice list of some college majors that you're leaning more towards or careers so we use assessments especially when we feel that a student is not quite sure oftentimes some students are feeling like they should be engineers just because they're good in math and they like science but that's not always the case so i really encourage you to look at assessments and to take some you know, and you want to absolutely have a good understanding and knowledge and be able to answer what your grades are, what your GPA is, and what your test scores are, because that's really how you can look at, are you going to fit into this specific college? And you want to develop what we call a key college criteria list and, and what matters to you as far as the college setting because you're going to be there for four years so you want to kind of meet with professionals that's another helpful hint if your parents or grandparents know people who are in a field that you're considering doing i remember i had a student who thought he wanted to be a dentist and he ended up being able to volunteer at a clinic and decided that that is not what he wanted to do but he actually liked the science part of dental work and and helping people so potentially his goals and his majors ended up being more focused on public policy and being more focused on um, community service type jobs that you can have, nonprofits. So the key criteria list includes academic programs that you're looking at. You want to be looking at your surrounding area. Where is this college located? The campus activities. So if you're a debater, and you want to continue to do that, you want to find a college that has a strong debate team. The location is important. I have had students have really great opportunities, but the weather was just not what they were used to. I've had kids who are used to seasons, and even though it's great when you hit sunny California, if it's just, or North Carolina, if the weather is pretty much the same the whole time, that can be challenging for many students. Cost and affordability, you should always be looking at that, partly because many, many degrees, mine included being a counselor, I had to get a master's degree. So you have to think long term. What I want to do, will, I, will it require that I get a master's degree? Many people get a business degree, but they don't realize that you really have to have a master's in order to be able to do certain jobs with your business degree. So cost affordability is important when you're thinking, how many years do I have to be in school? The size of the campus is also important. Make sure that you've visited and, and feel like you could actually attend a certain size. 
you know, these are the things that you want to prioritize and you want to know yourself. So these are the things that really matter. And you do your research and it takes time. And that's, you know, that's important for you to know. It's not a quick fix and it's important that you don't wait. It's important that you're actually doing this while you're in high school. So you want to explore the college's websites. You want to take their virtual tours. You want to review college search books. If they, many libraries have them, I know it's challenging to, to get in a library now, but there are many college search books that you can look at. You can attend college fairs. I really like college fairs for ninth and 10th graders. I think they're a bit overwhelming, but at least it's bringing in the college knowledge and what they have to offer. You wanna to talk to alumni tap into your parents. Parents know people in different fields. Parents, um, you can actually look up on LinkedIn where people went to college and you can track people down. I know myself, I've had people reach out and say, hey, you're an alumni of this particular college. Can you tell me what your college experience is? So, or was. So, you know, you want to speak with the college admissions officers and think about the time frame. You don't want to be doing it when you know that it's a busy time for them, but there are many times that it's slower and you have the opportunity to talk with them. And social media has helped. You can get on their Twitter, you can get on their um, Instagram, and you can actually message them, and that would be great. So, you, you don't want to forget to review these things and what are the requirements? I have a young man who is looking at a specific school and they absolutely require a fine art. And his high school and the state that he lives in does not require a specific fine art in either theater, art, or music. So his school incorporated his languages, which he has actually taken every year his Spanish, so he's at the AP Spanish level, but it's not gonna help him for this particular school. So he has had to make sure senior year that he signed up for his AP art history that will fulfill what this particular college wants. This is a very popular college, and, and it's not that it's hard to get into, it's just with popularity, sometimes people don't get in when they're expecting that they will. So these are kind of the things that you wanna be looking at. And when you are making your list, it is so important, number one, that you do not apply to 40 colleges. I just have never agreed with that. That means you're not actually doing a really good search. And when you do make your list, you wanna make sure, and this is based on you, your scores, you're comparing it to their previous freshman class that came in. You wanna make sure that you have a, enough schools that you are absolutely going to be getting into your probable 75 to 80% chance of acceptance. Yes, you wanna put some competitive schools on the list as well. You wanna be able to, you know, where you know you have a 50-50 chance. Those two categories should be your largest amount of schools that you're applying to. Your reach schools, 25 to 30%, you should be putting one or two of these on your list where you have a maybe a 25 to 35% acceptance rate, especially if you're able to get a scholarship of some kind. There are very talented musicians that I work with, but that's not what they're studying, but there's a good chance that they'll get some money because they are a musician and they are willing to be either in the marching band. And the wild card schools, make sure that it's less than 25% of your list that you're putting on there. What the last thing you need is rejection letters from every college. So it's important when you're making your list, do not make it a, a list that is really a list that doesn't fit your probability of getting into the college. So you wanna make sure that your college choices are matching what you are capable of doing and that and that these are based on your scores and grades schools that you can get into or have a chance to get into many colleges are doing a form of a visit they're keeping parents distance there a lot of them are having people do a tour with the car and within their car or they're having a scavenger hunt and it allows parents and students to visit colleges, 
but they are not necessarily walking them around in groups. So find out how your college is doing it. And they all have ramped up their virtual tours. I've been looking at a lot of tours lately, and there is there is much more than they used to have. Because the, previously the goal was to get you onto the campus. It is important that you consider that. All colleges know that it's challenging at this time, so I feel like they're doing a decent job accommodating it. So you want to be able to do that. If at all possible you can sit in a class, whether, whether it's virtual or if you're actually physically there, that would be very important to do, especially if you're down to three colleges that you like all of them and you've received decent packages. So remember that your final visits oftentimes are in the spring as a senior because you do not have to sign on until May 1st. Give yourself an opportunity to do these things. It makes a huge difference. Talk to the heads of departments. I've had kids who are so connected and wanting to be at one college and once they do an interview with the director of a particular program and they have their list of questions, it's changed their mind. So you want to tour the surrounding area as well. What's going on in the area? Is it an area that you feel like you could walk downtown to? Is that important to you? Do you have extra hobbies? Do you want certain things in a city or in a town that you previously had gone to that you want to continue to do? I have a lot of students who really enjoy ballet and dance of some sort, so they want to find a dance studio. So it's important for you to be looking at things like that. The other thing you want to do is, if possible, you want to plan to meet with a college representative. So generally you can make that appointment to do your virtual tour or to do the tour on campus, however they're doing it. But you can also request that you meet with a representative ahead of time. And that's really important to do. But it does take time, so make sure you plan. Generally, they're two weeks out, so you need to give them a two-week notice in, in order to get that accomplished. And don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call different departments. Make sure you have your list of questions available to you. That would be important. And seek out people that they're highlighting. There's always students that they're highlighting that are in specific departments, and they usually have their name up. You can find those students, and it would be great to connect with them to find out their experience. You want to realize that you're not only looking for a good school, but a good school for you you in particular. I have a lot of kids and I myself love winter and I love skiing. And if you're if you like winter sports, it would be important for you to find a school that would allow you to participate in that. These are this is where you're going to be for the next 4 years. So it would be important for you to look at, okay, I have 3 colleges here. I have pretty much the same financial package, but one of them is near an awesome ski mountain and the college is connected and they they drive a bus up on weekends or you could actually potentially work as a ski instructor and make some money while you're in school it's not about where you go to college it's about what you do when you get there i've said this over and over and over don't be a college snob especially now we need you to be at a college that's going to maximize your ability to afford it. So find out, can you be a part of that research? Can you, it might be a smaller school, but if they have more research opportunities, that's even better for you. So make sure that you're looking at these pieces. How many opportunities are there for research? How many opportunities are there for you to participate? Even if you're, you're interested in participating in sports, are you going to be able to do that? That's the important key to this, and you want to explore these campuses and find out. Get to know yourself as a person. That's where you have to kind of separate from your friends and think about you and what you are interested in, because the next four years, it's going to be long if you're not happy there. Again, we're going to add a link where you can access our key college criteria list. It will help you make your key criteria list. Please access it. If you think this is a helpful video, please like and share it. And if you have any questions about how to develop that list, please feel free to leave a comment down below. 
Have fun making your college search. It's important for you to do this. Don't avoid it, and I'll see you next week for Tuesday Tips.